and Anya survive. Uh, we've got three panellists here who will be talking us through the recent developments uh, in, in Catalonia, what it means for the left there and here. So we've got uh, Jordi Miquel, we've got Ona Cartografera, and Luke Stobart. Uh, Luke is an activist and an author, and uh, Jordi and Ona are activists with the CUP, the Popular Unity uh, Candidacy, an anti-capitalist presence in the independence movement. So they'll be talking uh, for 15 minutes each, and then we'll open it up to questions and discussion. If that's okay. Okay, so should we just Okay, please. Uh, thank you, thank you for being here, and thank you for inviting us. Um, okay. Um, the thing is that we, we would like um, more to listen to you that rather than us making long speeches. Um, we are aware that maybe you know the situation better than what we can explain or something like that. So I just want to say a little bit is what's uh, happening now in Catalonia and our situation, how we reach to this point. Um, and first of all, I would say that, that the situation between Catalonia and Spain is not something new. It's not that something that happens that had happened in 10 years or seven years. It's something that has happened between all the story, you know, the, the history of of the country. So it's something that we have been deal, uh, dealing with uh, for many, many, many years during the whole history. So ca the willing of the Catalans being independent, it's something that it's not um, because of the crisis or because of an economical situation. It's something that it's related to more feelings, to more the nation, pro the history, politics and everything. Uh, but it is true that the independence movement has grown up uh, from the 70 years ago till now. And uh, I, I want, for example, I won't forget this, those people that, for example, in 1978 or in mid-80s or 90s uh, were having their demonstrations on the streets. Um, they were called the minority. And now, for example, we have like two million people uh, going through the streets every year claiming for that independence. Um, it is true that nowadays maybe uh, this willing is more spread because of many factors. One of, one of it is the economic, one of it is the crisis, but also the willing uh, of the Catalan people to change, to change the politics, to not uh, have this kind of right-wing parties in their government as we have uh, been living for all these years with Partido Popular in the Spanish state, and also the, the willing of having respect, respect for ourselves, respect for our being considered as a nation, respect for this kind of catalophonia that, that for many years um, the Partido Popular has spread just to gain some votes. So that's a very important point, because for them, um, having this Catalanophobia was uh, a matter of gaining votes and um, it, it was like a matter of policy as well. Um, so this claim for independence, um, okay, let's, let's restart it. So um, what we have done was uh, having a claim, uh, claiming for independence, but also for sovereignty, also to be recognized as a nation, also, we ask for economy sovereignty and also the referendum at the end. All the answers that we were getting from that were no. So I'm saying that because um, at this point, after all the process that we've lived, um, we had to take some brief decisions about what we want to be. And I'm saying that because we have tried, or at least the Catalan government have tried many times to um, become or start this process of being independent through m m different ways, through many different ways. Um, they have gone to the Congress, they have um, asked the pet petitions, they have asked to uh, the government from many, many ways. They have tried to get more sovereignty and the answer has always been no. So when you always have a non, no for answer, but people still find a need to have this independence because it's a, a willing, because it's, you have the right to decide, because it's something that uh, people can and I think they must to, to fight for, 
um, we, the Catalan government, decided to celebrate a referendum, which was on the 1st of October, as you might know. This referendum was set because of a Catalan law in a parliament that was constituted yeah. Con yeah. Yeah. Um, by an election that the Catalan people did in a region legal uh, election. And the majority of that parliament was pro-independence. So they had in their programs the pro-independence uh, movement and the pro-independence program um, and process. So it was not something surprised that they were working for the independence. Uh, so at one point, and we start working for that, and on that, sorry, we start working on that, and we uh, create this law to get a referendum that set us our freedom. Um, we celebrated till the Spain, the, till the um, even with the Spanish state saying that denying it and saying that this won't happen. So on the first of October we vote. We vote um, even with the aggression and repression of the paramilitary people. Uh, sorry, the paramilitary police and other kind of police that they were there, and they really hit people, <laughs> and there, there are more than 130 videos of, uh, on aggressions and repression to the population for voting, which is that something that it's really important to know that they just want to vote. I mean, there were no aggressive answers from the people to the police, only one direction, okay? So, the referendum was on the 1st of October, and I must say that um, two million people vote, even though that circumstances, and even though the most um, 700,000 votes were kept by the police. 90% of these people vote yes, so for us, that's a clearly majority to claim for the Republic. Unfortunately, this claim for the Republic was not not the following day, not the two days before. It set on a uh, week after, claiming for that republic. And then, um, as you might know, um, the government, the people from the government, the people from Catalonia, the government, one part were, uh, have gone to Brussels, and the other part are now in prison. So that's a little bit the sum up about what have happened here. Um, where are we now? So now, as today, we are facing some elections uh, that there will happen on the 21st of December. Oh my God, yes. I have too many dates on my head. Um, and for example, for CUP, which is my party, um, we decided to run these elections <coughs> just uh, last week on the 12th of November. And I want to explain why we are facing these elections. These elections are not elections that the Catalan government uh, wanted, not, not even CUP. These elections are imposed from external factors and external actors. And those elections um, are quite tricky because uh, they want to restore something that um, like the restore the government and the legitimation of the Catalan Parliament. But for us, uh, the government that we have, even if it's uh, kept like one, um, half of it in prison and half of it in Brussels, those people are our government. We haven't um, um, renounced. renounced, sorry, it's a long weeks. Uh, we haven't renounced of this kind, uh, our government. But we know that if we don't run these elections, the people, the parties of the non-pro-independence, the unionist parties, they will kept our parliament. And we won't be there to fight for it. We won't be there to uh, show the world and also our people that the game is still on. So, for example, today our party have decided the candidates and the positions of them to run these elections. Um, 
everything has been said about it and if, if you want to know further, um, you can ask about it. But the thing is that we are going to run these elections because we think and we believe that it's our place and that's our parliament and we have the mandate of the people to continue this process of independence. As I said, the president is not in the parliament, it's not even in the country, it's kept in Brussels. He's still trying to do some negotiations, he's still talking with many other parties from the pro-independentist, but he is there and that's something to, to be aware. Um, as I said also, there are 10 people, members of the government, uh, in prison, two female and eight, uh, sorry, yeah, and eight males. And six or seven. So, so sorry, it's six people from the government, male <coughs> ones in prison, two female, and the other two are the leaders of the organization or the massive organizations of the civil organizations pro independence like Omnium and ANC. Uh, okay. Um, I don't know if you know that um, in Catalonia, these kind of organizations are the ones that have pushed the government to uh, many, many, many years about the independence and about making this republic coming through. Um, they, all of them, the 10 of them, are in prison uh, not for murdering, not for uh, any aggression, not for, uh, well, violating any law, just they are in prison because they have prepared and they have encouraged and pushed people to vote, uh, also the debates in the parliament, so they, they were there for, for political reasons even though the, Sp the Spanish state denies it as well. Nowadays also, our parliament, our Generalitat of Catalonia, our government, uh, but I mean the main building, our offices, are uh, intercepted and occupied by Spanish state people. So all the departments have people from the state and uh, they have like, so new bosses, no, I must say, so the workers, are not working for not the republic, which will be the legitimization after claiming it, but for the uh, Spanish state, which has occupied our building. Fortunately, that doesn't happen in town councils, not uh, the province, not like the region uh, buildings or uh, institutions, so only in generalitat, which is so also something that to be aware of. And also, I have to explain about the Article 155. I don't know if you have heard about it, but Article 155 is the answer uh, from the Spanish state when we claim for the uh, Republic after the referendum. They said, and they were like warning us, you will have this article, you will have this article. This article comes in the Constitution, and it says that when a region um, behaves in a badly way, saying that it's against from the mm, main reasons of the state, it's against about the political path from the state, the state has the power to control that region. Um, 155 plus 116 is the intervention of the region and dismantle the region and like colonize the region in a matter of no. So it's been a debate about 155 because it, uh, even in the Constitution it says so. It doesn't clarify in which actions does this uh, 155 take place. So we don't know exactly what does it mean. We and they, so that's for sure. So um, there are some people like the journalist Vicente Portal who said that 155 is not being applied. So there's some people in general that and there's some uh, paramilitary uh, police in the streets, but even though our town councils are running as usual, people are in the streets as usual, education as usual. On the other side, there are some journalists and also experts that say that we have this 155 in a quiet way, but we have it. Um, this few weeks ago, um, eight teachers from La Seu d'Urgell, which is a very, very small town uh, in the countryside, 
uh, have been accused to have been accused to um, to spread ideas to the pupils about the independence movement and about uh, yeah the republic. Um, that's one one side. So we have been we had this kind of debate because as you might know in Catalonia our language our culture is quite different from the Spanish state. So we had some attacks on culture and language and social. Uh, aspects. So having these in accus accusations in schools, also having the generalitat you know, um, kept with people from the state, or also having these parliamentary people on the streets, also having these laws, laws from us like equality and gender, um, I don't know, uh, edu also education, but many other like civil rights and, and basic rights uh, laws cut out. So we have like many issues there that they say that this means 155. Also our money is kept, so. And finally, I just want to say that even though all this mud, all of this mess, we also have lo the, the power of the people. It is, I, it's something that I always say and claim because it's like our flag. So, after uh, we had the, those leader, uh, two leaders of the main civil organizations in the prison, and after uh, the referendum, many nucleus, many local uh, town halls, and, uh, sorry, towns, not town halls, towns, uh, organized themselves with something called the Committees of Defense of the Republic. This is very important because it's people from the same town uh, from different parties, or even in not in any party, just um, local people um, organizing themselves to defend this republic. And they are there to make actions. It's not like creating debates and debates. They are acting pro the republic. So they organize a powerful strike just one uh, week ago, and one, one week and a half ago. And then also they organize um, they are organizing not only strikes, but also they are organizing cutting uh, the roads, trying to paralyze the economy, because uh, for them, that's the right to decide. Those are the steps uh, that they think that needs to be done. Uh, furthermore, uh, Luke is going to explain, Jordi, Jordi first is going to explain a little bit more in detail about these considerations, and Luke will explain what's next. So, if you want to.